We are in Avinci, the uh, hometown of Leonardo da Vinci, which means Leonardo from Vinci. And we're gonna go to the Leonardo da Vinci Museum. We're gonna check out his birthplace and we're gonna tell a little story about it. I got van duty today. They're just worried that I would drop them on the bike. You know, serious cyclists here. Publicity caravan is kind of the bane of our existence. <laughs> really loud music, honking, and then they stop like every five kilometers, every little town, get out of their cars and do a little dancing show. <laughs> Did you ever do this when you were in your 20s, Andreas? You were? You were in the publicity caravan? We did once, <laughs> well, not a long time ago, huh? like uh, yeah, about 12, 14 years ago. Yeah, I think it was one of the year after I actually stopped racing, or the two years after. Yeah. It's fun. Did you learn the dance? Uh, I was already able to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Italian, of course. Of course. <laughs> You did wonder you, who these did, people did you, are. Did you dance? <laughs> you dance! <laughs> he was a different dancing. Not like now. Take the music. What, 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 what kind of dance was it back in your day? It was more like a group dance. So, like a bit more classic. I mean, classic but Italian style. But, uh, more or more less was the that. same. Partway through Vinci, looking at the Leonardo Museum, and the view is not too shabby. Ian, what do you think of Vinci so far in Tuscany? Um, impressed. <laughs> uh, it lives up to the reputation of one of the Leonardo being a genius of his time, and you can see why a genius would be spawned in a place as beautiful as this. Uh, Alright, Ian's kids, for the record, I told him to get you guys a crossbow, so when you're bummed out because all you got was a t-shirt, don't get mad at me. I tried. I really did. I tried for you. Sorry. <laughs> Ian just tried to run off with the keys. And that's what happened to the keys in Belgium. <laughs> Turning the keys that Ian took from the bed and breakfast.
We're driving now to catch up with the rest of the team, but it is time to officially introduce the final member of the Giro crew, and that is our expert driver, Amadeo. Hi, guys. We're driving through Tuscany right now. Amadeo, could you explain why Tuscany is such a great place for cycling? Tuscany is a great place for cycling because of a, on a particular tie kind of a flat. That's <laughs> that's his Tuscany flat. The second it starts to rain in the van. <laughs> It's uh, really windy out there. <laughs> Felt like Belgium. <laughs> well, actually, from now on, it's dead wind. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, but it switches every time. Yeah, I mean, guys cool. will have to be heads up yeah. in terms of yeah. where the road is going. The, there's a really gnarly tail cross, like right out of Vinci, but mm -hmm. it's going to predominantly be tailwind, which is going to make a any breakaway chance is very difficult unless people are rocked up with 58 tooth chain rings. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's a tailwind, if they let the brakes slip too far away, it's really hard to bring them back. So is there a that might be. A KOM on it? <laughs> oh, of course, there is one. <laughs> well, uh, we wouldn't even get the day's records. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are. I am. Yeah, we should. Uh, He's all right. <laughs> Put him in the hospital for five days. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, yeah. bottle of painkillers and uh, hit the road with flow bikes. We are cyclists, not soccer players. So we suffer and shut up. Bye. Just wrapped lunch, about to head out of Vinci. We saw a Peloton roll through. Ian, what's next for today? Uh, we are on our way to Frascati, where tomorrow's stage will actually finish. We're going to watch the race on the way there, and then we're going to make a show about it. And we're also going to check out the finishing climb in Frascati for tomorrow's race, which will be really interesting because it's uh, a technical four-kilometer uh, descent, two-kilometer ascent, and yeah, it's, it's, it, it, there are a lot of guys who can win the race tomorrow. Condition now, if the road have some holes uh, or uh, some dangerous corner, blah blah blah, or, or, yeah. or if the road is uh, uh, with some some gravel in a, in a corner, uh, uh, well, and basically start, I think, uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes before the before the race, uh, send an info information. To the, the team director at the, the first the first car, and him send uh, the same information to the rider with the radio. And well, in this kind of race, they, they, they receive uh, more information possible. Sometimes help a rider to decide uh, if uh, attack or not. Uh, or well, stay stay focused on the road, stay in the front position of the uh, the group. Because of course, if you know in 20 minutes start to rain, 
or if you in 20 minutes start uh, one very very small uh, road you can advance to the group you can go up to the group and uh, receive more information possible sometimes change the the destiny of the course <laughs> Just got back from our recon ride of the finish of stage four, stage four of the Giro d'Italia here in Frascati. It is about a two kilometer climb, averaging 4%. Uh, a couple of good pitches at 7% and a technical uh, twisting ride. Um, yeah, up to the finish line. It's gonna be a really interesting finish. The GC guys are gonna have to stay at the front um, minus a breakaway or even in the main field and there's also going to be a lot of guys that are not traditional sprinters um, but have a good finishing punch going for the win here. Now that we got you off the show, yeah, off the record, on the record, <laughs> That's confusing. Elliot Viviani should have been DQ'd. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he <laughs> should have been DQ'd but it's uh I didn't think he was going to. I didn't think it was that bad. I'm all about safety, but I didn't. <laughs> where does that rank on like the worst sprint violations you've seen? I uh, like barely scratched the surface. <laughs> Ian, how about you? Viviani's sprint was it was it really bad enough that he should have been DQ'd? Absolutely, it was terrible. I will say this, and I wish I had said this in the show that. I don't know if he did it on purpose or not. It could have been not on purpose. You said he had sonar. <laughs> you said it was a sonar-powered foul. <laughs> <laughs> did say that was a good one. <laughs> but whether it was on purpose or not, uh, he should have still been the cute. Like even if it, even if he drifted um, unintentionally. He still took Muschietti off this line, and he shouldn't have. Killed. Like honestly, it just looked like his left leg was really strong on that pedal stroke, and it just kind of like veered him to the left. I, Viviani, strong left leg. Yeah. Like we could do a whole show about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is Viviani left-handed? Investigate him. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs>